Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of Plane Savers! Hey everybody, as you can see from the title and thumbnail, we have a big announcement uh, I'm going to reveal today. I can't say much, uh, but here, watch this. So, as you guys can see, that's going to be pretty cool. Unfortunately, that's not this episode. Uh, that's going to be episode 8. But, and I'm not saying too much about it, but I've been hinting that uh, DTD has one last mission before she goes away for the winter and starts some more maintenance. So, uh, kind of put two and two together. I know some fans, some eagle-eyed fans, have been seeing some of my Easter eggs in the background and pieced together uh, what we're going to be doing. So. Uh, that's going to be next episode, so hopefully you enjoy that. Um, keep track with my social media uh, for up for live updates. Look, Dash 7 enhancing the audio. <laughs> uh, but for today's episode, we're going to do a Tiger Moth and a Fokker update. And uh, let's get to that now. Let's go see what uh, Flight Chops is doing with the Tiger Moth. Let's go check that out. Check one, two. Check any check. Whew. How you doing, Mikey? I'm just down from a flight in the Harvard right there. And uh, that's our tiger project. Nobody's here today. This is Saturday afternoon, so I didn't get to see anybody working today. But uh, after my flight here, just got down. I'm gonna have to clean some oil off that girl. Just got her put away. And uh, seems like we got some pretty well organized stuff here. Whoever's here to check it out with me, right? Yeah. So uh, looks like stuff's pretty organized here. I don't know what's this. Maybe you can ask your viewers if they can identify what all this really well cataloged pile of parts is. See some kind of cranky thing? Is that a trim? I don't know. Looks like maybe it's a trim, although that seems more high tech than I would have thought for a Tiger Moth trim. Uh, looks like some landing gear over there. Don't know. Obviously that's the wing, the one wing we've got. A lot of damage though, so they're thinking of using this as a template to make new wings. See some new stuff over there. Pretty clean fuselage there. So that's happening. So I think we might be winning. I'll have to get the crew to check in to let you know specifically what's going on. But uh, from what I'm seeing, looks like some pretty organized stuff happening there. <laughs> I'm not as good as Casey and Astad is at doing this. You've gotten pretty good at doing this, Mikey. You gotta kind of look at the lens, find the empty space. You use sunglasses so you can look at the monitor. They think you're looking at the lens. That's the trick. I'm not a very good vlogger. <laughs> Anyways, uh, hope the uh, Fokker project is going well. I think the Tiger might be ahead though. I just got my episode published last night and headed straight here to go fly in. Banged out, I think, seven or eight landings in the Harvard. Come on. Good boy. You gonna help me clean it up, buddy? So after flying this thing, you gotta kinda clean the oil. There's some oil there, and a little bit around the cowling there. Usually there's some down here. Yeah, it's a bit of a sploosh there. You gonna help, Hoover? But uh, I didn't do any real smashers today, so I don't expect there to be a lot of oil. But I'm gonna clean her up for the next guy. And some there. So I'll put the camera down. Get a wide shot of cleaning some oil. On the hook. All right, yeah, there you are. Come on. Yeah, we got whoever with us today. Good as new. Yeah. Love flying this thing, but cleaning it can be a pain. But today wasn't bad. Boom. Well, thank you, Flight Chops, for an update on the Tiger Moth. Really cool to see that Harvard. Uh, if you don't know who Flight Chops is, he's the number one Canadian aviation YouTuber and he's definitely been helping us out. Uh, if you're just joining us, this channel must make no sense. But <laughs> I've been getting a lot of that. We've got a lot of new subscribers and a lot of the comments people give me like, what the heck is going on? So what's going on right now is uh, we have two projects. There's the Tiger Moth project that you just saw and our Fokker DR1 replica. Yes, the Red Baron airplane uh, that we're working on. Uh, it's looking like 
the Tiger Moth, because we're doing a head-to-head -head battle. Who could be done first? It looks like Tiger Moth's ahead, but do you guys want to see the first the first bits of uh, of us uh, getting Fokker parts ready to go? Uh, if you do, uh, check this out. So welcome back, everyone, to e, e the school where it all started. And it's almost uh, 8 o'clock and I'm here because I've been working the past hours on those parts, the rear webs. And they were the same ones you guys saw in the previous episode. And I'm here specifically because we are now ready for machining. And that's what I'm doing right now. And that is the 1 16th of an inch plywood sheet, the finished one, and it's 4 foot by 4 foot. And on that sheet, we can fit uh, 26 rear webs. I'm being helped by uh, Pascal, which is uh, an ENA technician who is uh, operating the machine for, uh, for me. Since it's aviation grade uh, finished plywood, the sheet is really expensive. So we, uh, I've been working with Pascal to do uh, safe management with uh, the, the sheets. So we were planning uh, our ribs like that, our, our rear web I mean, in that pattern so we can save uh, the most wood, uh, we can use the most wood out of the sheet. That here guys is only 26 of them and uh, we are doing of those parts of the rear webs one, we're doing, we're doing 50 of them and it's crazy thin, it's unbelievable, it's unbelievably light too. So there you go guys, what would have taken numerous days, if not weeks to do, only took us two hours. And that here is the whole pack of 52 rear webs for the ribs. And each one of them is identical to the other one. So that plus the time savings is really the beauty of CNC machining. And just, just look how thin they are, it's unbelievable. So that pretty much sums it up for tonight. I'll head back home. It's getting late, the computer is closed, the machine too. But I'll be back tomorrow and I might be with Bobby to do the aluminum jigs and uh, some other plywood parts like uh, the front webs. So see you guys tomorrow right now. Hopefully that transition worked, but anyway, today we're August 24th and yet again some progress has been made this morning. So look at what I've got right here, the whole stack of DR1 front webs for the ribs. So the whole stack is there, none of those parts here are missing. We won't have to do any more of those except if we break some in the process of rib making. But other than that, all of them are made out of birch plywood coming directly from Finland. All 1 16th of an inch thick and they're all identical one to another. So uh, there's still some wood shavings that I haven't got time to remove unfortunately. But uh, other than that, they are in really good shape. So, if we move to the left, that stack here is again a stack of rear webs for the ribs. But those ones here are the rear webs at L run, which means those are cut right here. They're not pointy like the other one you saw in the last clip. So those ones right here is gonna be, are gonna be on the top wing at L run section, which means the L run is gonna go right here to move. So those and those have been machined this morning on the same CNC sheets. Now I'd like to show you something pretty interesting because if we take the rear web of the DR1 and place it right beside its front web, the DR1 wing shape is starting to look like something. So we kind of get the scale with the, the computer keyboard right there, but still it's not that huge, but it's actually pretty impressive to see. And uh, if you guys wonder why, why there is that, that hole in the middle right here, it's where the spars go, like uh, I explained in, other, in, an, in another video, sorry. So it goes right through all the ribs, all the wings. And uh, yeah, finally this plane is starting to look like something, even though it's only two pieces, but we're starting to get it. So before I forget, do you know, or sh shall I say, guess who came this morning? Here we are <laughs> with Benjamin at the school, <laughs> and he's trying to hopelessly teach me Katia. <laughs> yes, I am. 
And oh yeah, right yeah. Now, there's the machine doing all the cutting, making more ribs and stuff. Exactly. <laughs> I think I'm too old for this. So that pretty much sums it up for today's CNC update uh, at ENA. And I must say thanks a lot to uh, the school. They've been really, really nice to us. Especially Pascal, the technician. Thank you very much for helping me operating the machine. And just before I leave you guys, I'd like to show you uh, that we've started machining aluminum for uh, the DR1 rib jig. And uh, hopefully in three to four days, everything's gonna be done. So see you guys really soon. Bye for now. So thank you, Benjamin, Bobby, and the staff at ENA for helping us. Look at that. We got, we got the wings are starting to go together. We're getting some jigs. I just got a message from Benjamin that some stuff is going really good. So it's going awesome. As you guys are watching this episode, I'm probably on my way uh, to the special announcement that I said this morning uh, or on the beginning of the episode. Uh, I can't wait. This is going to be awesome. The access, hopefully, that we can get as just our little YouTube show uh, behind the scenes of some of uh, uh, the coolest uh, things that we can uh, muster up for this, uh, for this upcoming episode. So stay tuned. Make sure to subscribe to check out episode 8 coming soon. And uh, yeah, I'll see you soon, guys. I can't wait. Bye.